All right, everybody. Welcome back to True Crime Loser. How you doing? Well, I've been putting off this this day for a long time. Today, I'm going to start talking about Jody Arias. Oh, holy night, the stars are bright and shining. Jody is horrifying, and I think probably most people know the story. I think it's probably one of the most famous murder stories, just because the whole thing's on YouTube, kind of like the Chris Watts thing. But I think the reason that I've... There's a lot of people that's like, do Jody, do Jody. And I think the reason that I've put it off for so long or just been like every time I've thought about it, it's like, oh, God, Jody," is because her style of navigating her murder trial and case and the interrogations is just exhausting. If Dahlia... I think the levels are, like, Dahlia is the, her style is the wormhole of absurdity, which is bad, and it's scary, but you can make it out alive. And then it goes, um, the, vo the troll vortex of insanity is a little bit scarier, and then Jody is just the black hole nightmare to hell. Multiple times during her days on the stand and the interrogations, they would be like, Jody, what you're saying is impossible, both physically and also evidence-wise proves it. And she's just like, well, what does the word impossible even mean? Surely the word has two meanings. And also, if you think about it, words are just created by society and can change meanings over time. And all of a sudden, you're just like, the monotone is just, and she never gets riled. And it's, just, it kind of reminds me of Casey Anthony in a little, a little bit, but Jody is even worse. She just hunkers down and her strategy is just to ramble so long that you want, you just, I don't know. It's like, I think her interrogation is eight hours, and I think she spent 18 days on the stand to the point where you almost think, like, does she like it? Does she like to be up there and just to be like, well, it's very interesting that you would even ask me that question because questions by their nature are flawed. And, and Travis body slammed me. But I spent the last four days in Mesa, Arizona, where this whole thing happened. And I think I, I don't know, just being out there in the desert, it was like, all right, I think I'm going to do Jody. But in order to start Jody, I'm giving myself an out because there's no way I'm going to do like the whole case chronologically like I do the other ones. Because it would probably take a month and like 30 videos. And I don't think anyone wants that, including myself. So I think we're going to do a little background information today. And then do, I want to I analyze the interrogation. And then I'm going to play it by ear after that. Like I said, she was on the stand for 18 days. Just going, well, interestingly enough, that's not what happened. And if you think about things in a real way then the things that you will the thoughts that you will have will in turn change what and it's it's just like ah all right so let's get into jody there's a clip of jody in 2010 while she's on trial for slitting her boyfriend's throat ear to ear, stabbing him 29 times, and then shooting him in the face, possibly after he was dead. 
and this might be the most grisly crime that I've talked about so far on this channel. And in 2010, while she's on trial for murder, she enters a Christmas caroling contest in jail. And there's a clip of her, and you can search it. Just search Jody Arias, Oh Holy Night. And she's in her stripe jail with a pink undershirt and her hair, which is this thick, she has this like thick, nice hair. And it's always kind of flat, but in this, it, you know, in jail, it doesn't look quite as good. And she's got these black Satan eyes and she's singing Oh Holy Night. And I think this is the clip that really just drives home how horrifying Jody is. And she's sitting there, and she, and she wins the caroling competition, of course. But she's sitting there, and it's just haunting. And she's in jail and has this echoey, haunting effect. And she's, oh, holy night, the stars are bright and shine. And she just has these eyes. And there's something just haunting about it, and I can't help. But just in my head, while I'm watching it, cut back and forth between her singing, How oh, Holy Night, and just slitting Travis's throat ear to ear, and all the stat, and then back to, The stars are bright and shining. And she's just a horrifying individual. It's almost like... Even just the way she moves is scary. There's things that, like, if you ever caught a wasp or a spider in a jar and just watched it for a while, just the way that it moves and is scary or just gives you the heebie-jeebies, the howling fantods, you know, just like, ugh. Just a case of the howlers. And that's what Jody does for me and she's one of the most manipulative scary manipulative people that we've talked about and I think her good looks she's a very attractive until you know her personality and then she's horrifying but you know first glance especially when the murder happened she's this young attractive this thick hair that like covers an eye and she's just like hi Oh, holy night. And, um, and it just plays into, even when she sits down for the interrogation, she, she, she's, can you take the handcuffs off? And she just, you can tell that she really just has sort of gotten whatever she's wanted in this little soft-spoken, good-looking, shiny hair. And uh, so just a little background info, Travis, the guy that she slit his throat ear to ear, Travis and her had been dating for two and a half years or two years or one and a, I don't know, around a little bit under two years, I think. And he lived in Mesa, Arizona, where I was for the past four days. And the Mesa, Arizona is a little town um, off of Phoenix, Arizona, in the desert of Arizona. I guess the whole thing's a desert. But so, and it's a, I think it would be described as a 55 plus community. A lot of the people are like my grandparents, where they've moved there in their old age because they don't want to deal with the winters of a, where they're from. So like Denver, it's kind of the Florida of the West. And so a lot of older couples, a lot of older people that want to escape cold winters. And then in the summer, it just gets brutally hot. It just turns into hell, really. And... Two-thirds of the people in Arizona leave in the summer and go somewhere else. My grandparents used to go up into the mountains of Sholo in the summer, and now they've gotten 
to the point where they're too old for that. So now in the summer when it's 120 degrees, they just hunker down in their house and crank the AC. But a lot of people are snowbirds. So they're there in the winter and then leave in the summer. And so in the summer, it really thins out. And the desert's a beautiful place. Well, there's great mountains in Mesa is very flat, like where the the city is, and then there's these great mountains, like mountains Mount Superstition, and these big red rocks, and uh, they divert a lot of water from Colorado. So there's all these fruit trees, and the cactuses go crazy. It's a really pretty place, Mesa, Arizona. I've always liked the desert; it's dry, um, but it always seems like the desert attracts sort of a lawless, you know, some of the weirdest crimes have happened in the desert, some of the most brutal. And it, I think it feels like this lawless quality or, you know, I could get away with it because I'm out here in the desert. And um, I don't know, just being in, in Mesa the, the past four days, it, it there's a feeling of... There's also a lot of, it's very pro-gun, and there's a lot of shootings. Like my grandma, when she turns on the nightly news, always goes, let's see who get who got shot today. So there's a lot of shootings, a lot of, uh, like a lot of like road rage shoot incidents that turn into shootings, and it's a pretty wild place down there. And Travis had lived down there, this guy, and he was dating Jody. Both good-looking people, good-looking couple, and but Travis was a Mormon. The ch- he was a member of the Church of Latter-day Saints, and I grew up in in Grand Junction, Colorado. And there's a lot. There was a lot of Mormons in Grand Junction because it's right there by Utah, and Utah is like the capital of Mormon people, and that's where they all live. That's where the big temple is. And um, Mormons have a very strict policy on hooking up with people before marriage is extremely frowned upon. And I think it's a huge sin or something, whatever they call it. And the tough part of that is that people are people. And so... You know, people are going to hook up. That's just the way it is. And so, like, I had a lot of friends that were Mormon in high school, and they would go through this huge, like, guilt process where, you know, they would, like, have a little girlfriend and make out and, like, touch her boob or something. And then it, and then they'd come to me, and, you know, they would be like, I touched her boob, and... You know, I what if my I can't my parents are gonna find out about it and I'm going to hell and it was a re- it was tough for them in high school like growing up in that age because like touching their little girlfriend's boob would turn into them feeling horribly guilty and lying to their parents and lying to their priest and feeling awful about it. And to me, it just was like, man. And now they're all like have huge families and are like doing great and have great jobs. And so looking back on it, I, it was like, I don't know if it's worth putting yourself through that much guilt and that much just like lying to everyone over just a normal high school hookup. But, um, and also Mormons are really strict about marrying other Mormons where to the point where they you almost have to convert, I think. And that's what my uncle did. My uncle ended up marrying a Mormon and he had to convert. And so now he's a Mormon. I think why that's relevant in this is so, it's because Travis and Jody are dating for a year and a half. And a lot of that is long distance. So Jody's from California. Um, I don't know, maybe like a five-hour drive, I would estimate. Four-hour drive could be, you know, 
could be six. I would say around like four to five hour drive. California and Vegas and Arizona is all kind of close down there. And so I think that Jody lived in Mesa for a little bit, but most of the time of their relationship, she lived with her grandparents in California and Travis lived in Mesa. And it would take time doing long distance relationship and which is tough for any relationship as you probably know I definitely know and have had a failing long distance relationship before but so there's in this you know year and a half two year relationship whatever it is and at some point Jody converts to Mormonism or she converts to the church of LDS. And why I think that's significant is as we get towards the murder and, you know, Jody slices this guy's throat ear to ear, what happened is, so Jody converts to, you know, his religion, and that is a sign to me that Jody really thought that they were going to be together forever, they were going to get married, and this was it. You don't convert to someone's religion unless you think it's going to be a long-term relationship. And so Jody, I think, is really all in with Travis. And then, as we see with a lot of long-distance relationships, Travis ends up finding another sort of girlfriend and Jody kind of becomes the side girlfriend just geographically people are gonna you know especially young people like this I think long distance relationships could probably work with older you know relationships like uh, my brother-in-law is in the military and so he goes off and is on an aircraft carrier for nine months at a time and you know him and my sister do fine but they're older but in young people a lot of times one of the persons in long distance relationships just ends up you know f having a crush on someone geographically closer so Travis starts to hang out with another girl and Jody oh, holy night, ends up taking it pretty hard and she doesn't, you know, break up with Travis. She just sort of becomes the side girl that will travel in and they still sleep together. And um, and then there's they, they, like Travis's family was going on this trip and he was going to bring Jody. And this is in 2008, right around when it happened. And he had called his family and said, actually, Jody's not coming. I'm going to bring this girl. And he gave a different name. And then right, also right around those time, that time, their cell phone records where, like, this is a few days leading up to the murder. Their cell phone records where they have these long cell phone conversations, like, all night. There's, like, a 45-minute conversation from... In t two in the morning till three in the morning and then another conversation until five in the morning so what that to me is is a breakup there's no real reason to talk for 50 minutes in the middle of the night unless you know you're breaking up and it takes a while to break up sometimes and so I think that he probably was giving her the the old boot the old late night boot. Hi, little T. And Jody, being just the total psycho path, black eyes, Satan from hell. Oh, holy night. Didn't take this very well. And as they did, I think a pretty good job of proving in trial is she. At that point, I think, decided that she was going to drive from California to Mesa, sleep with Travis one more time, and then murder him. Which is like, 
I don't know. It just goes back to that spider. I'm sure she was called the Black Widow or something by Nancy Grace. But so her plan to get away with this was to rent a car in California. And then she had a work trip in San Diego. So her plan was to make it look like she was going to this work trip, but also go down and see friends like in California and then go up and do this work trip in Arizona and sort of have an alibi that she drove all around that area but didn't go to Mesa and she turned her phone off you know one of her strategies is around Mesa you know she turns her phone off and um One of the weaknesses in the plan is that the miles on the rental car, you can't change. And so one of the things that gets her or that makes her story not really work of just, I just went to Arizona. And if you think about it, I, or I didn't go to Arizona. And if you think about it, I had a work trip and work trips are necessary if you want to make enough money. And it's just like, everyone's eyes are crossed. Like what? And um, you know, so she's obviously has a lie for the miles that she got lost. And so anyway, so she drives to Mesa, Arizona and her, and there's a, ends up that there's like a digital camera that Travis had. And so there's evidence of her there. Cause she's taking pictures of Travis in the shower, doing sexy pictures and, And then at some point, she stabs Travis 29 times and one in the heart. She slits his throat from ear to ear and then shoots him in the face and and then leaves. And Travis's friends find him or Travis's roommates find him. Um. I don't know, a time later, it's definitely a few days. It might've been a week later. And then, and immediately they were all like, you got to look at Jody. You have to look at Jody. She's been stalking him. She won't leave him alone. He wanted to get rid of her, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. Kind of reminds me of Shanna Huber's. They've, they have very similar personalities in the sense of they both sing in the interrogation shanna hubers is like right after she just blew this dude's head off it's just horrifying so it's both these pretty long-haired you know probably use looks to get you know their main i think their main card in life has been their looks and both couldn't take no for an answer with someone breaking up with them. And then so it's, I think like a week or two goes by uh, after Jody has killed Travis and she drove back to California and had started working at this Mexican restaurant. And after a week or so, they think they finally have put enough together to drive and a detective drives up to California to interrogate her and it's a doozy it's like an eight hour session of just exhausting black hole monotone lies just well actually if you think about it police interrogations are flawed because the truth is really relative to the society in which it's created and it's just brutal and I don't think I've ever even gotten past the first like hour or two because it's just like all right Jody have a good one thank you but that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go through it and so I'll link the first two hours <laughs> of it in the description and so watch that tonight and then we'll get into the interrogation tomorrow I'm giving myself an out with Jody. I don't know if I can do the whole 18 days on the stand or I don't know how this one's going to go, but 
I'm going to dig in for a little bit, and we'll see what comes out. Let's see, 25. All right, I think I'm going to cut it off there. If you enjoy the show, support me on Patreon. There's a link in the description. To everybody that has subscribed and comments and participates and likes the videos, I really appreciate it. It helps me a lot. Um, yeah. So here we are on Jody. Oh, holy night, the stars are bright and shining.